Hi, and welcome to What the Flick. That's Ben, that's Alonzo, that's Matt. I'm Christy, we're talking about Lincoln. Are you aware that Lincoln was a really important president? Did you guys know that? <laughs> no. Because <laughs> if heard. not, spoiler. Um, and, and important things happen with him. Um, this He's is no Chester A. Arthur. No, no. this is Spielberg's. Um, he wanted to work on this film for what, like 15 years he was working on it's it? It's been floating around for a while. It was going to be Liam Neeson for a long time, and then he decided oh. he was too old. And anyway, it's Daniel Day Lewis, which makes sense. Um, yeah. Who's going to describe Lincoln? You are? Oh, yeah, me. Please right, do. Sorry. Go. <laughs> this is not the whole life of Lincoln. You are not going to get rail splitting or homework on the back of a shovel and coal or, <laughs> you know, debating Stephen A. Douglas. Uh, this is. And a, a shocking lack of vampire killing. <laughs> Sadly, yes. If, if this is what you're looking for, not in this one. Uh, this movie is almost entirely set in January of 1865, and it is about how they passed the 13th Amendment to ban slavery and all the political machinations involved, and it's riveting. Take a look. We here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. That government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. We can't tell our people they can vote yes on abolishing slavery unless at the same time we can tell them that you're seeking a negotiated peace. It's either the amendment or this Confederate peace. You cannot have both. How many hundreds of thousands have died during your administration? Congress must never declare equal those whom God created unequal. Leave the Constitution alone. We are stepped out upon the world stage now. With the fate of human dignity in our hands. Blood's been spilled to afford us this moment now, now, now. Do we choose to be born, or be fitted to the times we're born into? Well, I don't know about myself. You may be. This settles the fate for all coming. Time. Not only of the millions now in bondage, but of unborn millions to come. Shall we stop this bleeding? Is it riveting? Well, here's the thing. First of all, this is the worst trailer. Ever. 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 Or, or in, in right. a while. The it's first a, one was really, really It's bad. an awful trailer. It makes you think the whole movie is going to be these sort of big speeches and, and you know, John Williams swelling, and there's a little of that, mm -hmm. granted. But mm -hmm. I, I, this movie is so smart and funny and Tony Kushner-ish about history and about making these people feel like real individuals and about just being very micro, you know, I love that it wasn't his whole life. That like, let's just do January 1865. That's enough, you know. And that's smart. And a lot of the best biopics, like you no, know, look at motorcycle diaries or whatever, focus on one little bitty yeah. pivotal point in a sure. person's life, whatever. Um, it is funnier than I thought it was going to be. It is like the the wonky kind of nuts and bolts of the way political lobbying occurs. Um, but I'm not sure I would say it is riveting. It, it kind of it yeah, didn't move I, me. My my biggest issue is that. It felt like most of the dialogue in the movie was written in the same style that we now read the speeches by Lincoln. And it felt like, and even if that was true, that everyone spoke that way all the time, at times it felt like kind of wading through King Lear. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you oh, really, no. you really, for me, I'm watching, a, you know, especially one of the Shakespeare histories, you're, you really depend on the actor to kind of sell what's being said because you may not completely understand mm -hmm. it. And there's, there was a little bit of that happening here. I felt like at times when they were talking about the ins and outs of the politics, it was like, I liked how the senatorial arguments were, on the one hand, loftier, but also meaner. And rowdy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, was, like, like, it's it was, like, what is this, Parliament? It was florid, but bitchy. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the way, you know, old school House of Representatives in the United States was. It yeah, was much yeah. more like what, what we know, the British Parliament. I agree with you. I, I didn't think so at all with the way that, I mean, there were some speechy moments in it where I, you know, as when I read Lincoln's speeches now and when I hear Daniel Day-Lewis deliver them, can't really follow it. But the mm -hmm. talking to each other I thought was excellent. And the scene with him and the soldiers at the beginning mm -hmm. I thought was outstanding. And the scenes with him downstairs with the guys in the wire room as they're yeah. were no, all the outstanding. the scene where he goes and sees the lobbyists up in the attic, like yeah. those, those were great the scenes. The scenes with him, his personal moments were 
of which is most of the movie. Right. Yeah, I want to so talk about it. how great the, the supporting cast is, how they almost have oh. too many great characters. Great actors. Yeah. Yeah. They're so the good. They don't get enough I, to do. I, I, Every I time first, somebody <laughs> pops up on screen, you're like, oh, it's him. You know? I, I first want to say, as much as I love him in The Office, this is the best thing that James Spader has done in years. He's great in this. Oh, he yeah, so He's great hilarious. in this. I mean, but you have John Hawks, and they yeah. barely use John Hawks yeah. in this. You have Tim Blake Nelson, they, you know, they right. barely use him. Jack Earl Haley. Yeah, he's in yeah. one scene. Yeah, he's, yeah. And he's really good at it. Tommy Lee Jones is on is on a roll. He's yeah. amazing again in this. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, even like the two soldiers who are quoting the Gettysburg Address back to, to Lincoln at the beginning of the movie mm -hmm. are Dane the, DeHaan Dane, and Lucas Haas. And also David Oyolowo. I'm, I'm messing up his name. Right. The black soldiers yeah. yes, in the yes. beginning. Like, people that you know. Well, Joseph Gordon-Levitt is his son. He's barely in it. He's barely right. in it. That's yeah. a good example of like how but, crammed this cast is. He's barely in it. But like just little <laughs> scenes, like you remember how good certain actors, like Bruce McGill, like mm -hmm. he's in it. And he's oh, just got right. such a couple of really funny, great lines. I guess that's the advantage of being Spielberg, is that you can get yeah. somebody who would lead a movie otherwise to, do to come and do lines. ten lines yeah, in Yeah, it's, it's like the greatest story ever told. But they know, <laughs> but nobody overdoes it. How Holbrook, you know. And yeah. Exactly. Not, but, we, but nobody overdoes it. You know, nobody nobody comes in to do their ten lines and, and then sort of yeah, tries to take like to it. Right. Yeah, I want to see more of him. All right, what's your numbers? I gave it a uh, 9.1, same as Skyfall. Uh, yeah, it, it felt like a good history lesson, but it felt a little too lesson -y, sometimes 7.5. Uh, I'm going to go nine. I'm saying seven. Um, I was impressed by it. It did not move me emotionally. I was moved right there from the start. Go. There you go. Well, I'm cold and soulless. So I've are. got that yeah. going for me. That's, an That's a pretty good score for somebody who's cold and soulless. Seven. It's, it's, it's like technically, of, technically, you can't you know, round argue it up. It's at an 8.2. Is it 8.2? I, I, I had to okay. give points away for, for no vampire killing. 8.2. <laughs> right. yeah, I understand. And it's at 91% in Tomato Yeah, about 91% right now. It's limited release this weekend. It opens nationwide next weekend. Bye. Sorry.